entitled parents stole my switch and held it hostage because I wasn't visiting anymore. Author is mentioned in the description. I'm 20 male and moved out of my parents' house at 18 because I really can't stand them. And it's for all of the kinds of reasons you can guess. They were jerks, favored my younger siblings, used me as free childcare, told me what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine and all that BS. When I left my dad told me not to let the door hit me on my way out and don't come back. I got the smallest and cheapest apartment I could find and have worked the same full-time job for two years. My parents didn't even hold out a month before calling me and begging me to come back home, because without me someone else had to watch my siblings. I refused because now I finally had time for myself. My dad eventually called me and actually demanded I move back home and pay them rent instead because family is more important than my personal independence. I said back to him that my life is important too, and for once I'm getting to live for myself. So he basically said well then see how long you can last without us. And we didn't talk for months. I don't know what he was hoping for. I managed well enough by myself. My family seemed to slowly accept that I wasn't going to come crawling back, and over time we seemed to mend things. I could tell they were having a hard time dealing with the fact things were on my terms and not theirs. They begged me to watch my youngest siblings from time to time, even though the two that are closest to me in age are in their mid-teens now. But my parents don't want to put babysitting on them any more than they have to, which is hypocritical of them since they tried to put it on me as much as possible. And yes, I have called them out on that. They responded with gaslighting and more months of silence yet again. And again they were the ones to come crawling back to me for help. Not long ago I bought myself a used Nintendo Switch, though could only afford one game for it at the moment, which is Mario Kart. I got it bundled with the console for a good deal. My mom came by on a Saturday and asked me to watch my two youngest siblings for a while. She basically pushed them in the door at me and ran. And I was stuck with these two rowdy kids all day in my tiny apartment. My mom didn't come back until after 9 p.m., and that was because I called her and made her come get the kids, and she really didn't like that I cut her fun time short. I said that unless she wanted to pay me, I wasn't going to be watching my siblings all day anymore, and next time I won't even open the door, and I'll call the cops if she just leaves them outside. The next morning I realized I couldn't find my switch anywhere, so I called my parents, and like I thought, one of my siblings took it. I said I was coming over to get it right away. But my mom said it could wait because my youngest sibling was gaming on it, and she didn't have the heart to take it away. I said it was taken without my permission, and I will be taking it back. I got on my bike and rode there as a P, and when I arrived my sibling was crying because the switch's battery had gone dead and they didn't have the charger. I told them to give it back, but my dad took it and said I can have it back when I agree to start helping out with my siblings more. I told him if that's how he wanted to play this, I'd get police involved. And no, I was not bluffing. He dug his heels in and insisted I wouldn't do it. Until I pulled my phone out and started dialing. My mom yelled wait, and hurriedly took my switch back from my dad. He called her a traitor and demanded she return it to him instead of me. But she said it wasn't worth having police called on them. Before leaving I told them if this ever happens again, I'd be calling the police first. And if they want a switch for my siblings so bad, they can get their own. My dad yelled that I can't disrespect him like that and I countered that even though I'm an adult, he's not bothered to ever show an ounce of respect to me, and I'd had enough. Then I walked out with him yelling at me to come back and face him. Right now it's back to silence from them. My mom texted me once begging me to still watch my siblings. I said that if she wanted me to babysit so bad, she could pay me, and I'd only take the money in advance, because I'm not doing it for free anymore, especially after they stole from me and tried to keep from returning my property. They don't own me, I'm an adult with my own place in my own life, and they can either get used to it or get lost. It's been over a week since that text convo, and none of them have as of yet talked to me again. Which is fine, they can deal with their own messes. I got the cops called on my mom for child abandonment, and I kicked my dad in the macaroons February 1st, 2023. Wow, I can't believe I forgot about this account for nearly a year. But I was watching Reddit videos online and randomly saw my original post and I realized I'd totally forgotten to make an update, so I've come back to give one. There will be police and some mild brawling towards the end. Don't know if that qualifies as a trigger warning, but I just figured I'd mention it. As some know, I previously posted about my parents refusing to give back my Nintendo Switch when one of my siblings stole it, and many commenters had a lot to say about the shit my parents were doing, and to just call police or CPS if my parents ever dumped my youngest siblings off at my door without asking again. 
while I waited and waited, but there was no contact between us for around three months since the last time my mom called and I refused to watch my siblings without being paid. Then it finally hit. My parents called me all of a sudden wanting me to babysit, and they acted like the prior incident with the switch never happened. I told them I was not going to babysit unless they paid me, and it'd have to be a day that I had off work. My schedule had also shifted so I no longer had Saturdays off. I actually asked my boss for that since Saturdays were the days they asked me to babysit the most. Plus picking up an extra shift was better for me financially. My dad got furious as usual and said that I needed to man up and help out. So I pointed out that he needs to stop acting like he has control over me. And technically I'm manning up for myself and my own life, like he always claimed he did at my age. Yet he always worked Saturdays and put a ton of his responsibilities on me so he could fuck off as far as I was concerned. He started yelling violently into the phone and my mom took it away from him. I said I could only babysit Sundays because that's my only day off, and I would only do it if they paid me $30 and included pre-packed lunches, dinners and snacks for my siblings, because I wasn't going to waste my money providing food for them. That's not my job, and if they took anything from me, like when my switch was stolen last time, I would get police involved to get it back. I saved the receipt when I bought it, and documented the serial numbers so I'd have no problem proving to police it's mine. My mom's bitch mode kicked in and she started swearing like a sailor that just broke a tooth at me. I let her have her rant while pretty much ignoring the phone until she realized I wasn't responding and started demanding I say something. So I said that she and dad have my conditions. Sundays only, $30 and pre-packaged food, or they could fuck off. There was a moment of silence on the line. And then my mom went off on me again and said that my younger siblings that are 14 and 15 had to step up to help because I wasn't helping anymore, and they needed a break. I laughed and said oh, like how you guys gave me breaks, like never. My mom tried to say that was different, and it was because I was the oldest child. I said that it wasn't different. They parentified me and I lost out on a bunch of my childhood because of it, and now I'm living my own life without them. And they are hypocrites to act like I should step up again when I'm no longer living there and they have two teenagers in the house that can do everything I used to do. My mom shifted into victim mode and started saying that my teenage siblings were rebelling and not listening to them. I said their bitching and moaning wasn't my problem. They need to figure out alternative child care. I'm too busy with having a life. My dad got back on the phone and started yelling at me some more. I just laughed at him and said he was just blowing hot air, and that he was talking, but not really saying anything. My mom took the phone back and pleaded with me one more time. I reiterated Sundays only with pre-packaged food and $30, and I won't hesitate at all to call the police if any threats are made or any of my stuff gets stolen. I heard my parents start loudly yelling back and forth at each other over what to do, so I said they can just work it out and get back to me later. Then I hung up. It was right back to radio silent for about a while. Then one Saturday morning a few weeks later I was getting ready for work when there was a sudden loud and fast knock at my door. The kind where you know they're doing it with both hands. My mom's done that for years as her knocking trademark to let me know she was there. And she knows I know the sound of it very well. And the knocking was followed by what sounded like someone loudly running down the corridor. I listened through the door and could hear my two youngest siblings bickering with each other and tapping on the door themselves. My mother just left them outside the door and ran. But because of all the warnings I got in my last post, I had a simple plan for this. I just opened my window, climbed out, and simply walked away. My apartment is in the ground level all the way at the end of the building, and I can climb out the window I have there easily by just pulling the screen out. I called one of my neighbors that lives a few doors down. She's a sweet old lady that likes kids, and I gave her the rundown. She's known about my situation with my narcissist parents for a while now, and called police for me to tell them that there were two kids left abandoned in the hall after the mother pounded on a door and took off. Suffice to say, the police came and picked up my siblings. My parents called me later and were furious. I pretended to be clueless and asked what they were so mad about. My mom fully admitted she left my two youngest siblings at my door for me to babysit, and ran. I asked if she'd just left them there without anyone answering the door because I was already out since I had to work Saturdays. My mom just got really quiet for a few seconds, then yelled how the hell was I supposed to know that. I countered that this was all her fault, and she literally abandoned her kids at my door on the hopes that maybe I was home. On a day I'd already told her several times I worked, like she was trying to force me to skip a shift by trying to give me no choice but to watch them. She started making excuses, but I told her what she did was inexcusable and immature. She ended up crying and I just let that go on for a while before asking if she was done yet. 
She went back into bitch mode and yelled at me the police were charging her with child abandonment. I said that wasn't really my fault since she left the kids in the hall, then said I would have called police on her as well if I was home and she refused to come back for the kids, because I told them before that I work Saturdays now, so I refused to be trapped into babysitting anymore. The rest of the call was some more pointless bickering on her end, and didn't really go anywhere. My mom somehow ended up getting off with just a slap on the wrist and a fine because she somehow convinced the cops that she honestly thought I was home and would babysit, or so my next sibling said when he texted me. I don't know how much the fine was, but the fact she had to pay one should make her think twice about just leaving kids at my door and running off again. My dad wasn't charged as well because he was at work, and he also claimed to be unaware of her intent to leave my siblings at my door. I was told he was actually pissed at my mom for doing that. The pot and kettle situation this was had me laughing so hard, but I guess I have to give credit to my old man if he'd have never done what my mom did. Either way that left my mom with a police record. That's a first strike in the eyes of the law I think. After that, things really boiled over on Thanksgiving. My parents invited me over and I was fully expecting it to be some kind of trap. And it was. At dinner my dad just sat at the table smoking a cigarette and acting like he was in charge. He had my mom sit me down and then said enough was enough, and he was ending this farce. He told me that I needed to move my ass back home and pay rent to help their mortgage and bills, as well as help parent my siblings because they don't have any time to themselves anymore, and the fine my mom had to pay hit their finances hard. I just said no, plain and simple, and I kept that up no matter how much he tried to order me. He ended up getting so angry that he actually attacked me. And he's not a small man. I thankfully am not either as I'd been hitting the gym for months and learned some amateur fighting. I had my steel-toed boots on as well, so I gave him a swift kick in the balls when he came at me, then punched him hard enough in the face that he was down on the floor in an instant. He landed with quite a thud and even threw up because of the pain while clutching his goodie bag. Then I told my parents that I had my phone recording in my pocket the whole time, and I could easily prove he attacked me first. My dad told me to get out of his house and never come back, and I obliged but not before taking a turkey leg off the platter and riding home with it to eat. Since then only my siblings have called or texted me. They said that I'd walked out like a boss, and there are now running jokes in the house now about dad's poor balls. I spent Christmas with a friend's family, and I've got a standing invite to come back for other holidays. My mom was pregnant, and my parents blamed me for losing the baby March 18th, 2023. Well now I know why my parents tried to force me to move back in on Thanksgiving. My mom was pregnant with kid number six, and I only recently found out. To start things off with, one of my siblings found my Reddit account not too long after my last post, and they showed it to our parents, who in turn showed up at my apartment screaming at me about how I had set them up to get my mom arrested and made the world think they are bad parents. Well, they are. I called them out while standing in my doorway about all the shit they've done, right down to leaving my siblings at my door on a day they knew I worked. That's bad parenting any way you look at it. And it didn't really matter that I set them up, because I would have otherwise called the police on mom anyway when she left kids at my door. And in the end it would have made no difference. My dad looked like he was ready to raise a fist to me, and I said that action alone proves me right that they're shitty parents, and stated that if he tried to hit me, it'd turn out like last time, and I don't think his balls could take another hit from my boots. And yes, I was wearing them. Dad seemed to wince and clench his legs together at the thought of what I did to him last time. So he ended up leaving and dragging my mom out by the hand. And he yelled back before leaving the hallway that he expected me to pay them back for the fine they had to pay for child abandonment since it was all my fault. I told them to fuck off and that I didn't owe them shit. They didn't say anything back. It was just recently that I got some very bad news news. My mom had been about six months pregnant and she lost the baby after a bad fall at home when she slipped on wet porch steps and landed face down in gravel. Honestly I couldn't tell she'd been pregnant at all the time I saw her prior to that. She's a bit on the heavier side and has always been clumsy, but not fat, just enough that you really couldn't tell if she was pregnant or not. It is sad, and this was her first miscarriage, so she really wanted someone to blame, and that someone had to be me in her eyes, because I'd destroyed the family by not helping, and by costing them so much money. She and dad showed up at my apartment again with her in crutches, just to say it was all my fault she lost the baby because I refused to come home and help when they needed me. It turned into a pretty big argument where I called them out on how they were just looking for free childcare, and looking to blame me for something that's not my fault. It's not my fault they got pregnant again when mom is 44 years old, and it's not my fault it happened anyway. 
blame it on the rotten old porch dad was too cheap to ever fix or replace. Well my father laid his hands on me again when I said that, and I got a sharp right hook from him, and then I ended up kicking his ass one more time. I'd never really stopped working out at the gym, and I'm even stronger than I was when I took him down last Thanksgiving. He didn't stand a chance. I blanked out in a rage, and ended up breaking his nose and knocking out both of his front teeth before my mom's screaming made me stop. Police were called, and I was put in cuffs while my father had to be taken to the hospital. Thankfully the hallways from my apartment complex have CCTV, and I had my phone camera going behind me in my apartment as well that I started recording when my parents knocked. The footage easily showed that my father attacked me first, and I defended myself. I'm essentially in the clear as it was labeled self-defense. But now my parents are wanting to sue me for my dad's medical bills and the fine they had to previously pay. Dad can't go to work for some time due to the beating I gave him. He's in a neck brace with a broken nose, a black eye, two lost teeth, and who knows what else. His beard also had to be shaved off, which he's also very unhappy about. He was already pretty much dead to me even before this, so I guess this makes him double dead to me. And what little power he ever thought he had as my father is gone. I'm physically much stronger than him, and soon I'll be starting a new job that pays way better thanks to all my hard work these past few months. And maybe with a few years of saving, I'll get a much better place to live. My eldest sibling called me to say I was their hero for beating the shit out of dad, and that they were planning on leaving just like I did when they turn 18. But it was my next sibling after them that found my Reddit posts after hearing them on YouTube. And that led to my parents finding out because my mom heard them talking about it and made them show my post to her. They said she was enraged and started breaking things. My siblings have apologized that they let mom and dad find out, and that they would have never said anything if they'd known mom was listening. Both have also said that they're happy there won't be another baby though. They're already having to do a lot of the childcare for my parents right now, and they hate it. They admitted to blaming me for leaving at first too, but they realized that when you become an adult, you deserve to take your own path. It's still up in the air whether or not my parents actually will try to sue me but I think I can safely say that it'll be a loss for them if they do. One of my friend's uncles is a lawyer, and said he'd represent me if my parents decide to sue. And he also says that they don't have much of a case since it was self-defense. And to my parents, who will probably read this, I only have this to say, leave me the hell alone. You don't own me or my siblings. And when the time comes for them to be able to leave at 18, I'll help them get out of your house. You both have always been selfish narcissists. It's not my fault mom lost the baby. And it's not my fault you had such a hard time without me in the house to be your free babysitter. Consider that broken nose and lost teeth is a good reason to never even touch me again. And don't forget that I have only told a fraction of the shit that went on in my life thanks to y'all here. If I wanted to, I could post story after story of the shit that went on in my childhood. But that wouldn't bring me satisfaction. So just leave me the hell alone. I confronted my parents for the truth, and my dad confronted me with a knife March 21st, 2023. It feels gaudy to post again so soon. In my last post I mentioned my mom miscarried in her recent pregnancy after a bad fall. Something didn't smell right about the information I got after all the comments I received about it. So I decided the only way I was going to get the truth was to go straight to the horse's mouth. So I went to see my parents on Sunday. They were both home and resting. They both look like hell too. My mom aside from needing crutches to walk more than a few feet, has a lot of marks and bandages all over her face from that fall she took. And my dad, well just see his description after the beating I gave him in my last post to see how he looked. My parents were beyond shocked I showed up, and I demanded to know if there ever really was a baby, or if it was all just some half ass plan to guilt me for not coming home. My dad said I had a lot of nerve showing up and just letting myself in after what happened. But my mom broke down in sobs and said she really had been pregnant. She lurched into the bedroom and retrieved a small but kinda ornate looking urn, and it had ashes inside it. I even checked to see if they looked or smelled like ashes from cigarettes or a barbecue or something, but they didn't smell anything like that. In fact, I barely smelled anything at all. I asked why they brought home the urn claiming the ashes were in it before. I checked online and it said 7 to 10 days at least to get ashes back and mom was in the hospital no more than five days. My mom said they bought the urn online, and expected to get the baby's ashes back when they went to the crematorium, and were really upset they couldn't bring the baby home yet. So they just waited until they could get the ashes a few days later, and then went out to get drunk. Mom claimed the crematorium did things a little quicker because she begged them. 
There was genuine tears in her eyes. I've seen her crocodile tears many times, but this didn't look like that. I got more information as to what happened about how my mom fell. She was running late to see her doctor, an OBGYN or whatever they call them. Mom explained that she overslept while taking a nap and was trying to hurry out to make her appointment then slipped on a toy while trying to get down the steps. The guard rails for the porch had rotted and broken off like two years ago, and dad never fixed or replaced them. So my mom had nothing to grab onto in order to stop her fall. And down she went right off the porch and landed face and then belly into the ground. She even showed me marks all over her stomach from where she landed. She told me the baby would have been another boy. I've got two brothers and two sisters, and there would have been one more brother. Then mom told me that a doctor warned her against ever trying to have another baby because her body might not be able to handle it again due to her age and prior injuries. I kind of figured that was the case after something's people messaged me about it, but it didn't make it any easier to hear in person. Finally, I asked the big question, why did she blame me? Mom started to say that day they showed up at my apartment was just really bad, or something like that. But dad finally spoke up and interrupted her. He yelled that it's because it was all my fault. If I'd done like he said and moved back home at Thanksgiving, then I would have been there to help and now a baby is dead because of me. I yelled at him that if he'd actually bothered to fix the damn porch, then mom might not have ever fell. And that's on him. Plus, he didn't even bother to tell me mom was pregnant back at Thanksgiving. Not that it would have changed anything. We continued yelling at each other, and rather than side with anyone, my mom just left the room crying. My dad looked like a lit match from how red he was, and he brandished his old hunting knife at me while yelling to get out of his house. As I was leaving, he said I was no longer his son. I told him that I'd not seen him as a father in years because he was always a terrible dad. But before I went out the door, I said to him that I'd be filing for a restraining order and if he ever lays a hand on my siblings like he tried to do with me, then next time he'll lose more than a couple of teeth and I won't hesitate to call police or CPS if he tries the same crap with my siblings as he did me. He yelled plenty of insults at me from the front door like you son of a bitch. I said back that was an insult on mom and he got red in the face again. Then I gave him a one-finger salute before riding away on my mountain bike. So yeah, I guess that's as good of an answer as I have for anyone. If this isn't the truth, then I don't know what is. But, does it matter anymore? I'm filing for a restraining order as soon I can, and I'll be looking to move apartments after I start bringing in money from my new job. I don't know if I'll feel like updating again after this. I'm just gonna be depressed remembering all this, so I think I may be done here unless my parents decide to do something bad to my siblings. But hopefully I've gotten my point across to them. I've already beaten dad up twice, and he still looked somewhat afraid of me while clutching that knife. It felt like he was looking at a monster. Maybe I am in his eyes. But if my being a monster to him means he never hurts my siblings, then that's fine. I'll be the monster. Sayonara everybody.